Would you like to give yourself a raise, not just an incremental raise, but an exponential raise? I'm not talking about 25 cents an hour raise. I'm not talking about $500 a year raise. I'm talking about a raise in multiples where at some point in your life, you can fully expect your annual income to become your monthly income and your monthly income to become your weekly income and your weekly income to become your daily income because if that's what you'd like, that's exactly what I'm going to talk to you about in this video. Have you ever thought about the fact that everything that you desire right now and don't have is on the other side of something you don't know or haven't learned and implemented yet? So whether or not you realize this, the learning gap is the earning gap. And the people, see, back in the olden days, as they used to say back in the olden days, right? Back in the olden days, the, the, it made sense to specialize in a thing and to go and get educated in that thing over a long period of time so you can do that one thing for the rest of your life. Without going into too much detail, wealth transfers from sector to sector through era, from era to era. Era, E-R-A, not error, E-R-R-O-R. From era to era, wealth transfers into different sectors. What does that mean? Well, if you look at from the beginning of time, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden through um, the mid-1700s, the, infra the economic infrastructure of the world is based on agriculture, and so everybody, the wealth was based on land and how much land you own, and if you raise cro crops or you raise cattle on that land, you can be wealthy, right? Change happened very, very slowly because you had one seed time and one harvest time every year, so you're, you had one opportunity per year to create wealth. I, anyway, so, so go, fast forward to the mid-1700s, we go from the agricultural age, we go into the industrial age, and we start using more machines and more technology to farm the land and to transport what we farmed. And so it increases productivity because of technology. And in the industrial age, in the agricultural age, if you were born into a wealthy family, you were born rich and you lived rich and you died rich unless some other country came and conquered your land and stole your wealth, right? You would live wealthy your whole life. But in the industrial age, it created the new rich, people who weren't rich when they were born, but they lived rich and died rich, right? And there are lots of industrial age moguls that we can think about, whether it be Rockefeller, whether it be Ford, whether it be Carnegie. So many people in that era created wealth because of technology and machines. And interestingly enough, the industrial age lasted from the mid-1700s to the mid-1900s, a couple hundred years. And in the mid-1900s, because we were producing so much stuff with all of our machines that we had to figure out a way to get all the stuff we're producing distributed all over the world. And so we went from the industrial age to the distribution age. And the distribution age started in around, like really blew up in the mid-1950s all the way through the mid-1970s, through like 1978. And so more wealth was created in the industrial age than the agricultural age, and more wealth was created in the, in the distribution age than in the, agriculture, and then in the industrial age. But then in 1978, they created the personal computer. And the personal computer inter it introduced the, the uh, technology age. And in the technology age, like, tech know-how was wealth. And you had Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and Michael Dell and Steve Wozniak, these kids that were in their 20s who were becoming millionaires and decamillionaires and hectamillionaires and billionaires in their 20s and 30s. Like, what is this? Like, who does that? And I don't know if you, some of y'all are old enough to remember that back in the late 70s, early 80s, everybody wanted to go to school for computer programming, right? But they didn't realize that Bill Gates started programming computers in 1968, so he had 10 years jump on the economic era. He had 10 years of preparation to prepare for the economic era that he made his fortune in, right? But he learned a skill before that skill was necessary. He showed up early. And then we went from the mid-19, uh, uh, from 1978 to the mid-1990s. In the 1990s, we got introduced to the internet through Prodigy and CompuServe. Some of y'all are like, prodded you who what and did what? So some of y'all are old enough to remember when the internet was nothing more than bulletin boards. And I'm like, why would somebody want to read those black screens with green letters? Who cares, right? 
and, and more wealth was created. And then people started learning how to use technology to educate people and entertain people and entertain people in an educational way and educate people in an entertaining way. And what I call the techno info edutainment age was born, right? And that was from like 2003 to 2008. You say, Myron, what are you saying? I'm saying that each economic era, if you've noticed this, lasted for a shorter period of time, which means the people who lived in that economic era had less time to tool up. Each, each subsequent economic era had less time to tool up and less time to work in the field that they learned to work in. Well, as time progresses, that becomes even more true over time. So wealth in the present and future age belongs to the people who can learn new things the fastest and implement them the soonest. That's where wealth is. Wealth is not in knowing what used to be true. Because what used to be true ain't necessarily true anymore. There was a time when telling all of our children what you needed is you need to go to school and you need to study hard, get good grades, you can graduate and get a good job with a good company and they'll take care of you. There was a time that made sense. But by the time a person graduates from college, the textbooks they used at least in their sophomore and freshman year are outdated. It doesn't even matter anymore. And so we have to learn things faster than we used to learn things. And, and what made me think about this, I was reading some comments on the video that I just uh, posted, I think this week, called Automatic Money Machines. And somebody said, well, Myron's showing us all this money that he makes from selling books, but... What if you don't know what to write about? What if you don't know how to write a book? What if you don't know how to sell a book? What if you don't know how? And I'm not even making fun of that. I'm, just, I'm, 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 really, I'm saying it slowly because I want us to think about it. What if you don't know how? You didn't know how to walk, talk, or go to the bathroom when you landed on this planet. And you think not knowing is an inhibition, like a real one? You, could, you couldn't ride a bike, you couldn't use a phone, you couldn't use a computer, you couldn't use a television set, you couldn't write, you couldn't read, you couldn't do arithmetic, and you think not knowing is a reason to keep from doing something? When there's more information on how to do everything today than there's ever been in the history of the world? Really? Like, I, I get it, you graduated from high school already, I get it, you graduated from college already, I get it, you got good grades, I get it, they told you you were smart. But if you bought into that enough to stop learning, you might find yourself as an educated fool. Because the world is changing way too fast for you to only know what you learned last year. And so, you know, I, I'm sure people look at, me, look at me and they say, how's this old dude building a YouTube channel, YouTube for kids? Okay. Here's how. This old dude don't stop learning. This old dude learned more this week than people who are thinking it's hard have learned in the last three years. You know why? Because I know the gap between what I know and what I don't know is way bigger than the entire body of knowledge that I've learned in my 62 years. And while other people are saying, but what do I do? I'm looking for how do I get it done? And I would recommend that you do the same thing. There's, there, there's no reason. I guarantee you, if we looked hard enough, we could find videos on YouTube that would teach us how to write and publish a book. Now, book's not the biggest moneymaker in the world, but it's probably the most long-term moneymaker in the history of the world. I don't know of any other thing that's been like making money for people as long as books have. I mean, think about it. Books have been around for a long time. So like, because I don't know how to do it. Okay. Well, there were, there was a time, like when I was growing up, you didn't know how to do it. You had to take a class or you had to go to school or you had to go to the library and get a book or to a bookstore and get a book. Now you can watch it on YouTube. You can listen to it on Audible. You can listen to it on a podcast. There is so much, but I don't know which information to listen to. Listen to the stuff that's going to help you do the thing that's going to move the needle for you. Watch the stuff that's going to help you learn the skills that are going to move the needle for you. 
Find somebody who reminds you of you, only smarter. Learn what they know. And don't change it. Just go do it until you figure out how to do your own thing. Because your own thing is just a combination of all the things of all the people you done copied already into how. <laughs> right? You didn't invent walking, baby. Are y'all tracking? <laughs> so <laughs> here's how it works. I am a very slow reader. Slow reader. But I'm a very fast audiobook listener to her. I, ain't, I get more out of an audiobook listening to it at two times speed than I do getting it. Like listening to it at one time speed, I mean, it's just like, I don't even know. What is this dude talking about? So it sounds like he's talking backwards, right? Okay, anyway. So, but I, learning is just as challenging for me as it is for anybody else. But here's the difference. I know the time's going to go by anyway, so I might as well learn it. Oh, I remember when I first found out about this thing called, quote, internet marketing. Internet marketing, that sounds fascinating. And so I got this internet marketing training program by this guy named Ron Legrand. He had this conference and he had all these people teaching in it. And then there was this kid named Corey Rudel. And Corey was the guy who invented like the whole idea of selling ebooks and autoresponders. He, he like invented this concept. And, I'm, and I started listening to all these cassette tapes. That's how long ago it was, right? This, is, this, is, this was in the early 2000s. I'm listening to these cassette tapes, and I'm like, this is going to work. This is, this is going to be great. I, I already knew how to write sales copy. I just didn't know the technology part. I only knew one person who knew the technology part. That was my brother, Dwayne. So I called him. I'm like, Dwayne, dude, you build websites for people. I found out about this thing called internet marketing. We could partner. You could build the websites. I can write the sales copy. We can get rich. He was not feeling it. <laughs> So he's younger than me, but he has an MBA. He was a corporate executive. He had a little side hustle where he built websites for people, and, it would, and he hated it because people wouldn't give him all the information that he needed to build the websites, and then he'd build the website, and then, like, then they'd want him to change it, and it's like, it was just like a hassle fest. And so when I said, dude, let's partner, and I kept saying this to him over and over and over. And one day I'm at his house. We're having a barbecue or something. And I said, dude, we can make all this money. He says, look, man. I'm like, whoa, bro. Pump the brakes, bro. He said, if you want to learn how to build websites, do what I did. Go to the church library and get these videos. Professor teaches Microsoft front page. And watch them. And then you'll know how to build a website like I know how to build a website. Now I'm both irritated that my little brother's screaming at me. And I'm confused. Why do we have videos in the church library about how to build a website. I was, I was like, what is this? I'm like, okay, the next day, I went to the church library, and I got the videos. Microsoft, professor teaches, but it was Professor Teaches Microsoft. Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Front Page, Microsoft, like, but micro, Microsoft Front Page. That's what you use to build websites before Kajabi, before ClickFunnels, before High Level, before all these other programs they have now. And, and it was so technically involved. And all the people in the internet marketing courses are saying, yeah, you have to make sure you put that on your index.html. And I'm like, what's an index.html? And like, none of it, it was like learning to speak a foreign language while you had to speak it. That's how hard it was. There was no point and click and drag and drop to build a website. That universe did not exist. It literally took me a whole month, eight hours a day, like to build my first website. And I used to teach network marketers how to do network marketing. So I had this program called Bigger, Better, Faster Network Marketing. It was four audio cassettes that I sold for $67. That was my first online offer. And then every now and then I'd combine this program that I created for my accountant called Tax Reduction University. I'd combine them together. That was like $197, but I put them together. I'd sell them together as a package for $97. Okay, so anyway, so I got this little package, Microsoft front page. And my goal, I said, if I can just make $400 my first month, I know this is going to work. By the way, after I got the website done, it took me two weeks to figure out how to take the money. <laughs> Back then, you had, you, had to have a, you had to have a merchant account, a shopping cart, and a gateway. And you had to figure out, you had to get those things separately, and then you had to put them all together, and then you had to like, create the product in the shopping cart, and then go, it was just a thing. 
I'm like, what in the world? Who does all this? Okay, anyway, got it done. I said, if I can make $400, this is going to work. If I can make $700, I will be the king of Internet Marketing Mountain. I did not make $400 my first month. I did not make $700 my first month. I made $6,700 my first month doing something that a month prior I did not know how to do. But what did I do? I figured it out. How did I figure it out? I just found whatever resources were available, and I just put my head down, nose to the grindstone, and learned it. I thought it was a fluke. I thought it was a fluke because this guy named Jeff invited me to speak on his conference call. Of the $6,700 in sales I did, $5,700 of it came in in one day from that conference call. So I'm like, okay, $5,700 came in one day. So I thought it was a fluke. But here's what wasn't a fluke. I decided if I got $5,700 from his conference call, I need to start my own conference call. See, I ain't the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I ain't no wooden spoon. And, and I started a conference call. And I started doing a conference call every Tuesday night called The Hour to Empower. And every fourth, fifth, or sixth Tuesday night, I would make an offer. The rest of the time, it was just teaching. The next month, I made $5,700. A month after that, I made $5,100. A month after that, and just kept on going. By December, that was that my first month was June. December, I had my first $10,000 month. Why? Because I learned something that I didn't know. I remember when I got ready to write my first book, which is called The Ebony Treasure Map, The Roadmap to Riches for African Americans. It became this. So I wrote that book. I got on an airplane. I flew from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania to, my, to Orlando, Florida. I went to Mark Victor Hansen's Mega Book Marketing University. The hotel cost me $2,000 for that week. The event cost me $1,000. And I bought another $15,000 worth of coaching programs while I was there. Why? I didn't want to just write a book. I wanted to become a best-selling author. So I was willing to pay the people who knew to learn what they knew that I didn't know. And guess what? The first week the book came out, I sold 900 copies at $20 a piece. I only had 500 copies printed. I had to rush back and get some more printed real quick. You say, Myron, what are you saying? I'm saying everything that you desired, all the money you desire to earn is on the other side of what you haven't learned and implemented yet. And guess what? The best time to start learning was 20 years ago. The next best time is now. Because the time is going to go by whether you learn the thing or not. The more you earn, the more you learn. The faster you learn, the faster you earn. If you want to change your earning, change your learning. And I promise you, you will change your life. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.